Here we've got our table and you might recognize those crocodiles or codiles that we had uh, that we got when we were up in Badu, up in the Torres Straits. We've had them for a while, but what we're going to do is we're going to take them out of the table. These are they're protect, pr protected by a sheet of acrylic. So we're going to take those out, roll them up, and we're actually going to send them home for safekeeping because we want to turn our table into some storage. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For those of you that are new here, our boat Marul is a Clansman 30. She's a fiberglass 30 foot masthead sloop built in New South Wales in 1969. Troy bought her seven years ago in Cairns and sailed her around the top of Australia all the way to Perth. Three and a half years ago, we sailed north from Perth to circumnavigate the Australian continent together, filming our cruising adventures and attending to any essential maintenance along the way. We are currently in lockdown in Tasmania, the southernmost part of the continent, where we've decided to carry out a long overdue refit. If you want to be notified of all our weekly refit videos over the coming months, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button. So what I've got at the moment, here's the table and we're going to cut a hole and make a lid here because underneath I'm going to secure this box. And this is just a quick half hour box that I might made, um, you know, mitre joins here. Um, with a ply bottom and of course I reinforced it here just to give it a bit of stiffness. This is going to hold our plates and our bowls because we just couldn't find a good spot to put them. So we're going to store them under the table. Instead of making a drawer which you would need to fasten, um, we're just going to have a lid so we can go down through the top of the table and get it in here. So we just measured the widest that we need this to be for our widest plate, stack our bowls and things like that, whatever pasky can fit in there. We're going to secure it to the bottom of the table and that way we're going to score where we didn't previously have it this much extra storage space we didn't film the making of this box because it's just so straightforward the 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 box that we made when the cabinets we showed this taping method of doing the mitres if you haven't seen that check it out um, and i just just cut this ply uh, put a groove in there and just threw it in when i made it but um it's, it's a nice nice tight box what we might do is just reinforce it with some splines, but once it's up under the table with brackets here, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be strong enough to hold a few bowls and plates, even in a, a bit of a seaway that we often find ourselves in. So we'll get into that now. We want to um, take everything apart, take the acrylic, everything else like that, cut a hole here with a router, um, and it will be transformed. Let's do it. <clears throat> so this table is just half inch ply, 12 mil ply. And it's just boarded by these strips of wood that are held by screws that have quite a bit of varnish and junk in them. And so I'm pretty surprised I haven't drilled them out. So it's a bit of an old bit of ply and it's got some history. It's been with the boat for a long time. There's quite a few dings and holes and stuff like that. So we'll lose some of those when we put the lid in. But I actually like looking at a, a table that's a little bit battle scarred. I know some people don't. What is unusual though, this is like 16 mil ploy. So I've got 12 mil. Um, I looked at it and I knew it wasn't three quarters. So I just thought it was half inch and the, the acrylic was playing tricks on me. When I'm setting the router, I'll have to, I'll just have to route a 12 mil recess for the lid to go in. That's neither here nor there. We'll get there. It's okay. What do we need? I need the center line. That's half of 745 Pascal. 372 and a half. So there's our center line there. We're going to mount this leg with a modification in length to the bottom of this drawer. It was mounted in this sort of crazy situation. So the table's the same size and the bottom mounting socket is the same. We're, we're not changing that at all. So I need, to, I need to have the leg in the same orientation back from the edge of the table. The only thing I don't really like about this is we're gonna see when we lift up the lid, ply edges. Mm, you really don't like that. It's not too bad because it's a lid. Um, mm. If it was always on display, you know how like all the other stuff we've we've gone to some lengths to sort of hide the fact that it's ply. Yeah. We're using ply instead of solid wood for a lot of this stuff because 
Supply is quite dimensionally stable. So in a, um, in a boat, the environment changes a lot and it's often really high humidity. So that's why ply is used quite a bit. But actually looking at the edges, some, some people actually <laughs> like the look of ply edges, but I don't particularly. So when we, when we route this out, even though I'll probably seal it up with epoxy to make it strong, when you lift that lid, you'll go, oh, it's made of ply. What are you gonna do? So the jigsaw is cutting on the pull stroke. So any tear out we're gonna get on the ply will be on the underside. But even still, you know, if you looked under the table and you saw a whole bunch of tear outs, probably not that attractive. And that's why um, I actually made the, the cut a little bit off the line because we're gonna follow this up with a router, which will give us a nice cut with no tear out on ply. So this is just the preliminary cut, then we'll attach the box and then we'll go with the router which will be a bit more of a messy and noisy operation, but it will give us a better finish in the end. I really like this. This is heavy. This thing has got some good, <laughs> plenty of copper in it. In an ideal world, you'd just be able to use that as the drop-in, wouldn't you? Mm. Some people do. <laughs> I've seen. I've seen a few where you just like, all right, just bang a couple of bits of wood in there and the, the cutout just goes straight back in. Mm. But it's, we, we, we won't do that. <laughs> this box I've got on the line, so I'll just, I'll just pop that on there and I'll just put the brackets with it. Um, this was, all I did was, this was just construction pine. We're, we're not really gonna see it. We will varnish it and you'll see that it's timber, but I didn't really mind about the dings in it. Just for interest, there's a little bit of a, a busted apart sap hole in there. So that's the face that we'll actually see. And I tried not to have too many chips and dings in that one. We've got the router out of the router table. It's a much more dangerous creature now. Um, but quite useful still. So we're just going to, I'm just going to set the depth so that this bearing here follows the inside of the drawer that we fixed here with those brackets that you saw. And that will trim up this rough edge so it's really nice and flush with our drawer. Now the next thing I need to do is to put a rebate in that. Here's our bit. So what that'll do is the bearing will follow along that edge and the cutter will put a half inch shelf as deep down as we set it. And I'm going to set it to be half an inch, 12 mil. Um, and then we'll just get a little scrap of 12 mil and we'll just check our depth so it, it ends up exactly flush. And then what I'll do is I'll make up a little MDF lid and we'll sneak up on the sides just so it's just right. And then we'll put the pattern bit back in the router table and we'll cut ourselves a lid. So what I like to do is I like to make up templates before I do my final cuts in the final material. Just so any screw ups I make is in like $5 a square meter material, not in $55 a square meter material. So there we go, we can, we can see that the router did a ter terrific job there. So if you've never really considered routers, um, just see, see about learning what you can because they can, there's just no end of things that they can do. They look really unassuming, but they're, they're about the most useful tool that you can get your, wrap your head around. Okay, so there we go, the router's off. It's nice and safe, isn't it? It's not spinning, so we can change the bit. Not so fast. Now. <laughs> it's safe. I've, I've just got a particular horror of what these things can do. I was talking to a guy that was had a, a plastic manufacturing industry and had an apprentice who ran his fingers through a router and a router table. I saw some of the pictures later on. It's all bad. You don't need to see them. You just need to know that it's all bad. This plunge works. 
Now I can plunge that down and when that bit of metal hits there it'll be that depth that I set. It will only go as far as that depth. Lock that point. And now if I unlock the router and it's free to plunge we know that when that bit of metal touches <laughs> the distance that it's travelled is that. This little turret of screws here because they're at different heights like that's the final cut. So I'll do my first pass on this one that's higher and that'll mean the bit can only travel quite shallow so it won't be hogging out quite as much wood. The router won't be working as hard, it won't be quite so uncontrollable um, and we'll just do two passes. So we've got a perfectly snug fit. So now I just need to take a just a tiny fraction off all the way around to allow for varnish or paint. Because there's been a few times now we've made things so exact that once we paint them, <laughs> they don't fit anymore. <laughs> so I'll just, I'll just make a little allowance for it so it's not quite so exact. You know what though, this is just slightly, slightly proud. So this plywood is ever so slightly cupped. So what that means, because it's not exactly flat, and I thought it was going to be because I'm naive and I haven't learned anything in the last 47 years, um, it, it sort of doesn't sit exactly in our recess because we made it exactly the right size and depth. So Lance just suggested that he had some laminated Tassie oak that um, wasn't required and it had a, had a couple of issues. But he's got a really great thicknesser there. And if you have a look, we ran it through the thicknesser. And this is the end result, a nice flat, pretty stable laminated bit of Tassie oak. So Paskey chose this bit because it's got some interesting grain. So we'll be able to remember our time in Tassie each time we look at the table now. We'll get rid of this. <laughs> we'll get rid of whatever that was. And we'll just attach our hinge to that back here like this. Okay? Okay. Okay. There's a life value in the city. Hurrying to cut my teeth. I can take what I need to do. What does it look like when you're living aboard and you're trying to varnish your boat? <laughs> it's Sunday morning and I'm sitting on the floor. I'm just going around with some 400 grit wet and dry and a little bit of turps. I'm just um, sanding down any little high spots or little bubbles that I missed when I was doing my second coat. Um, I just noticed that it was a little bit rough and I really want it to be smooth. So yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Um, it's Sunday morning. Well, as soon as we finish this, we're going to evacuate the boat so we don't let any hairs or any dust fall in my beautiful varnish job. And it's unfortunately it's pouring with rain, so hopefully we'll be able to amuse ourselves in town somewhere. <laughs>
All right, so here we are. This is the table. I finally finished varnishing it, although <laughs> no job, no varnish job is ever really finally finished, That's is true. it? That's true. And the reason why we didn't actually, if you're wondering why we didn't oil this table, um, it was because this is a high wear area. We wanted it protected from the elements. We didn't want it to be affected by spills and water. Yeah, hopefully not too much the elements. We want the elements to stay out there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely protected from us. We'll, yeah. we'll call that ourselves the elements. So everything that everything in the boat um, that's wood, we've given a coat, one or two coats of epoxy, and then followed it up with varnish. And we found that that's made the wood really, really stable. We're in the middle of spring now, and um, we installed all this at the start of winter so it's a lot more humid now it's a lot warmer and we haven't noticed that anything um everything fits as it was that, that's that's exactly right so all of everything that we put in these sliding channels people were concerned that it was a tight fit and i mean you know come on there's like a millimeter yeah, <laughs> yeah. so everything that we've installed when it was zero to five degrees it's now regularly getting up to like 15 and more um, and the humidity is really up. It's like yeah, raining a lot at the moment. And everything's, you know, we haven't seen any warping, jamming, changes in dimension. I think that that, um, in, in, encasing everything in, in epoxy, epoxy yeah. is, a, is a good deal. And it adds to the strength as well. You know, we've used um, miter joints in a lot of things, even this. But by the time you epoxy everything and everything gets into any cracks that you've left, it's um it's stable it's strong and it's well sealed so yeah so this was this lid was a really snug fit it's still a snug fit it's not not fitting anymore it fits really well let's have a look like at that. this snug fit look, <laughs> behold look there's stuff in there yeah so in there we've got our plates bowls and little cups we also reinforced the back of this locker lid with some aluminium channel and also we have on, on this underside here we've painted some epoxy yeah, this was this was in an effort as well, just to make sure that it wasn't any warping. Because um, we had that issue with the ply, the ply was already cupped when we cut it. But when this we bought it. When we bought it, yeah. yeah. When we, so it was we didn't realise it was cut. For, we cut it and made a perfect template for this, I mm. suppose, with ply. Um, so this is the beautiful piece of um, laminated laminated. Would you call it Tasmanian oak or? Yeah, well, Lance um, Lance glued up a whole bunch of this stuff. Mm. Um, so it's not it's not layers upon each other. They're all just edge glued, but he mm. glued it with some really good gear, and then of course he ran it through that thickness. Yeah. So it's a lot better than just some ply from the local hardware. Oh yeah, it this looks is, beautiful. This is Lance built. Yeah, and it's got all this really nice grain in it. It's native trees to Tasmania, so native um, eucalypts. Native eucalypts, and yeah. that, it's it's hard. It's a lot harder than this ply table. Yeah. And you know what I like? Like we've got the old with the new. So this yeah. is old, it's beat up, yeah. but we've given it, you know, like we, we, we're trying to keep everything old um, going. But yeah, we did go for some new timber. And I'm really happy that over the, you know, the last couple of months, as the seasons have changed, none of this is cupped up. Like it's all still mm, flat. Really flat. So that's really great. Yeah, it's turned out really lovely. And so I guess we should talk about how it's secured to the side of the the boat against this trim against the hmm. against right. the lockers here so if pasky just goes down and she like there's just a, a i'll just get out of the way while <laughs> pasky removes the bolt so that's um you know it's pretty straightforward we can just take a nut off the bolt slides out and then as soon as that leg is free okay um with the with with the with all the stuff in here now it's a little bit heavier than what it was i can still do it but it's much easier with two isn't yeah. it pasky so we'll lift her up and it's quite tight here it's a tight fit you fold and that leg up i'll just move <laughs> <laughs> We, we don't have all the cushions at the moment because we're still in the midst of a region and it's a dusty, dirty environment. But there we go, we can um, move over there, Pascal. <laughs> you, can, you can sit cross-legged if you're having Japanese now, if you like. <laughs> when, we've got the, when we've got the cushions here, the, this little mm, three quarters of an inch rise that helps keep the cushions in and gives us a shelf, um, those cushions that Stephen made for us, they are firm. They're well, really you, firm. You can't even feel this. You so can't this feel converts that. into a bed. You know what? We're going to have a quarter berth free. So we were thinking about making this a passage bed, but what that would mean is the other person has to tolerate someone just in the space. Yeah. Whereas we're going to be able to get rid of a whole body. Yeah. <laughs> the and the person on watch can have like fix a tea or have water or whatever. Yeah, and, and this, have this, this table. is a chart table. 
You right. Know? So you don't want this down with a person on it because, yeah. like, if you want to do paper chart work, yeah, which is less common now, right. admittedly, but if you want to do it... Or sit at the computer and do work on the charts, plot your route, plan your route. All of that. Yeah. So particularly on long passages, you just sort of want to get someone out of here. So we can just have this down if we want, but it's not a really common occurrence um, to be honest you know it's much better to have a table for us we actually modified the way the table is attached it used to sit on that piece of wood that we converted into the drop board that i showed you two weeks ago yeah um so it used to sit on that dark piece of timber but we've sort of modified it um, using bits and pieces from the hardware store we've got these um, multi-fix brackets and just by putting these um, six mil cap headed screws into the timber we've got a really strong button head base here mm. where I can just fit those over um, and we've just tightened that up so once that leg is actually in there the, the table is really really resistant to moving yeah um, another modification that we made that the old table had really sharp corners but we you know we've we rounded these corners off um, on the um, inside edge where we pass through corridor yeah Obviously we didn't round off the edge that's against the no against trim. the wall is still nice and sharp which we yeah. want but the the ramp the corners that we might bump up into in a seaway we never did um but i could see i did it once did you? i got <laughs> bruised yeah i got a bruise sort of um yeah in my waist area it was always a dangerous yeah. thing i always wanted to get rid of it yeah also underneath where the where the um where the the box that makes up the drawer um we we've glued that up there's a few people that are like worrying that i use pva glue they go oh it's not for marine use but you don't want to build a boat out of it <laughs> but the, you're not everything that you see in here i, I saw one commenter that made the point like not everything is marine use in a boat yes it's marine but like if you're getting the sea you know like around this box and dissolving <laughs> pva glue there's going to be a bigger issue yeah. You know, then the strength of the box isn't, and it's encased in epoxy as well. So, you know, you, you sort of, you, you can't interpret these things too literally. So that, that glue does a really good job of holding it together, then it's epoxy sheathed. But then if we look, these brackets are what does the hard work on the sides. So that's holding and supporting, um, you know, that, that wall on each side of it, giving it a lot of strength. And then underneath where the leg comes down, we can see that there's this, um, bit of timber and that gives us just the right height but it also supports the front edge and gives that box a lot of strength and of course there's another bracket on the back wall the old table used to, it did fall off every now and again <laughs> when we were in a big sea or if we fell on it in a funny way or if we leant on it in a funny way it would pop off so that's not seaworthy and not good no especially it's... not when you're pounding into weather and it was rubbish wasn't yeah. it yeah yeah anyway um i'm happy with the table and pasky's happy which makes me even happier you might have noticed behind us this all right it's just a small little little rack that we made but really um it's sort of our way of showing appreciation for something that one of our viewers sent to us liam he made us this leather binder for our ship's diaries and at the moment we've got our present ship's diaries although he did he did include a few little inserts to go in there so it's it's bustling <laughs> at the moment with our with our in you know our in use books but this uh, this lovely leather binder, we're going to be really proud to use this to, to keep recording Marul's adventures on paper, not necessarily on film. And this is where it lives. So we made this little shelf, not only to hold that, but whatever cruising guide that we're using at the time can go up here. And of course, our little, our little shortwave radio, it, it stays up there out of the weather and out of the way. So it was such a simple little thing to make. It took us all of an hour. It probably took Pascal a lot longer to finish. <laughs> okay, so she got the job of varnishing. Um, again, glued up, epoxy sealed and everything, varnished away. It's just, look, a couple of dowels set into some side timbers. A really easy project, but really, uh, you know, it, it goes well with the timber. I'm really pleased with it. So if you saw something in the background, that's what it was. Again, thank you to Liam. Thank you to everyone that supports us in their own little way. And uh, we hope you enjoyed the video and you're going to join us next week. All right, take care. If you haven't already, thanks for giving the video a thumbs up and we'd love it if you'd subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out.